All right, in this uh, unit, we're going to be focusing on an overview of the different things and aspects that involve in the atmosphere. And then as we go through uh, this six weeks, we'll get into more detail on some of these parts. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we know that our atmosphere is made up of different levels. There are four major levels. There's actually five now, uh, maybe six if you want to break up that outer level. But there are four major ones. You're talking about the troposphere, which is the closest one to the Earth. And then moving up away from the Earth's surface, uh, you go from troposphere to stratosphere, then mesosphere, thermosphere, and then finally the exosphere and ionosphere in the outer atmosphere. Okay, so the four majors are going to be those first four, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. All of these uh, different layers added up together is going to equate to about 40,000 miles worth of atmosphere. So a very large volume when you're talking about uh, in relation to our planet. All right, I want to focus on the troposphere and stratosphere, especially because these two are going to be vital to the to their survival of our planet and our species and um of the of the workings of of the different cycles, water cycle, those types of things. Uh, so troposphere first. This is where all of life occurs. Most of our weather is going to occur here. Uh, most of our mass in our atmosphere comes from the troposphere. And now, if you add the troposphere and stratosphere together, that equates to about 99% of the atmosphere's mass. The troposphere itself is about 75% of the atmosphere's mass. Like I said, this is where our weather is going to occur, and our weather is going to dictate the climates for different regions. So let's look at weather just a little bit. Uh, we know that there's direct sunlight always uh, hitting the uh, uh, the equator, and so this is going to drive ocean currents, warm and cool ocean currents, which are going to in turn have an effect on our air masses and how they move and the temperatures and, and moisture content that they're going to have in them. This is also going to be linked to... Um, how solar energy is distributed with the tilt of the earth in relation to its position to the sun in these different seasons. All right, so our weather, our weather is going to be mandated by these air masses, and we're still talking about the troposphere. We have different air masses that move through the troposphere, and as they come in contact with each other, depending on the temperature they carry and the amount of moisture they carry, they, they're going to create different types of fronts, these boundaries. And fronts is where our weather is going to form. Now, um, depending on where our air masses come from, they're going to come from a particular area, and this is going to be called the source region. If they come from, say, up, up north from the Arctic, they're going to come across the land and carry colder temperatures. They're going to be considered continental polar. If they come uh, from the tropic areas uh, close to the equator or across the oceans, they're going to be con uh, con considered maritime tropical. Uh, four of these major air masses uh, are listed, and of the four, the two that influence the U.S. weather the most is going to be the, the continental polar and, and the maritime tropical. Uh, pressure centers can also have an influence on the weather. Uh, you have low pressure and high pressure systems that can um, that can uh, move in with these different air masses. Usually, if you have a low pressure system moving in, it's going to equate to cooler temperatures, maybe cloudy uh, cloudy conditions, and even precipitation. Whereas high pressure systems are going to bring with it more warmer temperatures, clearer skies, uh, fewer clouds, maybe even some windy conditions from uh, from time to time. Uh, El Nino and La Nina, these will be a couple topics we get to uh, later on, and they can also, uh, these are also systems that hang out on the different parts of different oceans, and they can, they can influence our weather patterns as well. All right, moving on. At next level, this is also an important level for, uh, uh, for the planet, the stratosphere, and the big reason it's important is because of the ozone layer that hangs out in the top part of the stratosphere. This ozone layer is very vital in the, in the, um, protection from the the UV rays that come from the sun. There are three major types of ultraviolet radiation that that reaches the Earth's surface or that reaches the Earth, um, and we call them UVA, UVB, and UVC rays. Now, of these three, the UVA and UVB rays are what actually reach the Earth's surface and affect us. Um, they cause things like tanning, sunburns, uh, skin wrinkles, sunspots, all the way uh, as bad as as carcinogens and cancers, melanomas, those types of things. Um, that UVC radiation, however, that's the nasty one that if it got to us, it could cause uh, 
very bad damage very quickly, uh, burning inside and uh, internal and externally. So, uh, and that's what the the uh, ozone layer helps protect us from. All right, now our, our atmosphere, each layer is going to be made up the same uh, type of chemicals. Now, depending on which layer you're talking about, it could be more concentrated due to the Earth's gravitational pull. But these big chemicals are going to be nitrogen and oxygen, and then a few smaller, like less than 1%, is going to be made up of some things like argon and, and helium and so forth. But nitrogen and oxygen are going to be our big, our big takers as far as the uh, makeup of the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, we're going to be looking at air quality in this topic. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, the, the different types of pollutants and how these things are managed. But we know that the EPA it manages the environmental uh, pollution uh, issues. It looks at water quality, soil quality, uh, air quality, those types of things. Uh, but each individual state also has its own um, government agency that, that focuses on environmental quality. Uh, for here in Texas, we have the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality Agency. Um, they're going to be monitoring things like vehicle emissions, so that's why you get your vehicle uh, inspected each year to make sure that it's uh, meeting those state requirements. Also, factory emissions from industry are going to be monitored uh, by this uh, state agency. As we go through this unit, we're going to be looking at the Fab Five, this big five as far as the types of pollutants that can get into our atmosphere. And here's a list for you. Yeah, our carbon monoxides, carbon dioxide, our hydrocarbons, our nitrogen and sulfur oxides, and then our particulates. So let's take a quick overview of these real quick. Uh, carbon monoxide, uh, this is usually going to uh, be formed from the incomplete burning of natural gas, one of our fossil fuels. Most of the times it's going to come from um, uh, things that we use in our home that is a natural gas base, but it can also come from our vehicles as well. Uh, it is odorless, and what it does is it actually uh, takes the oxygen from the air that we're breathing, and we essentially are going to suffocate as a result. Um, cut off uh, oxygen to the brain and so forth. So uh, that's uh, some of the side effects of this gas. It is odorless, and one of those things that we try to monitor. Our hydrocarbons also are going to come from uh, the incomplete burning of fossil fuels, usually coal and uh, and petroleum or oil, and it's going to produce things like smog, um, especially cities uh, with a lot of a lot of cars, uh, cities with a lot of industry, and also that tropospheric ozone, this ozone that forms uh, close to us that we breathe in, not the one in the stratosphere, uh, but the pollutant version one that forms down uh, in the troposphere uh, that we breathe that can cause. Uh, um, asthmatic type uh, symptoms, uh, respiratory problems, those types of things. Uh, then our nitrogen oxides and our, our sulfur oxides, these two, if you have nitrogen and or sulfur mixing with water in the atmosphere, it's going to form uh, nitric acid or or sulfuric acid, respectively. Uh, and then when these things uh, mix with the, have mixed with the air, the clouds and the moisture in the atmosphere, it's going to come as acid rain. So acid rain is going to be a topic that we get to as well. And then our particulates. Most of our particulates are going to come from natural processes on the planet. Uh, pollination and cause allergies, those types of things. Maybe dust in the air. These aren't things that we can really have, a, have an impact on as far as controlling, but they are there and they do cause problems. So these are going to be our five, uh, five pollutants that we'll be focusing on in this unit. All right, we'll also get into this idea of climate change or global warming. We'll get into this topic of, of s ever since the 70s when we've been able to, we've had the technology to, uh, to track and monitor the amount of, of things that we put into the atmosphere, especially carbon dioxide. We've realized that there's been a huge spike in, in the concentration of carbon dioxide since the 70s. And uh, this is directly related, for the most part, to, to our factories and to the, the number of vehicles, whether it be cars, planes, those types of things that we use are for transportation purposes. Um, naturally, our carbon dioxide can be stored in forests, uh, in our trees, and then in our oceans. There are animals in the oceans that use that carbon for things like the building of their, their shells and that type of thing. Um, so it's usually, it can be monitored by these carbon sinks that, that are naturally occurring on our planet. However, we, we're getting to that point to where we have been mass producing this stuff through transportation and our, our planet can't keep up. So that's kind of the background about uh, climate change and what it's 
maybe what it's being caused from. Now, is it, is it not? That's going to be a topic that we're going to be getting into. We're going to be looking at um, this idea of the greenhouse effect and the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And is it playing a part in the overall change in the temperature that's been occurring across our planet? We have been able to monitor that over the last um, few decades, and we've been noticing that there has been an increase in our average temperature on the planet. Now, once again, is this a, is this just a cycle? Is this cyclical? Which means it's happened in the past um, before we've been able to monitor this stuff, um, and now it's just happening again. Or is it is it directly linked to um, this excess carbon dioxide that we continually pump into the atmosphere? These will be topics that we get into when we're looking at climate change. Uh, we'll also get into the Kyoto Protocol and look at how this UN summit back in '92 really started focusing on uh, vehicle emissions and trying to find a way to do something different besides using gasoline or making our vehicles more efficient and making them more cost benefit to where uh, we can afford them, we can get them out into the market, and then we can have a, a, a smaller impact on um, on our atmosphere. Uh, you've been noticing it, they've been out a while, hybrids and electric cars, but just here recently the 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 efficiency of our hybrids and our electric cars have become um, astronomically greater than what they used to be when they first came out you have uh, uh, electric cars that can charge within an hour hour and a half now uh, so it takes just a small amount of energy as far as time goes to get that full charge and they can go um, comparable to say going a hundred miles on a gallon of gas so they can last a very long time so the efficiency is catching up and hopefully that the uh, the economical value will will catch up as well as far as affordability. So once again, these are going to be the topics we're going to be focusing on uh, as we move through this unit.